Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Uppers! Kenchiro Takai's new game? I think I pronounced that right. I think I got his name right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got a syllable mixed up here or there, but... Oh well, this is his new game. Now, before I go any further than this, I have to point this out. Because this is the announcement everyone was waiting for. Well, not everyone, but this is what I was talking about at the end of my weekly update. I now have a partnership with PlayAsia. And they are sending me games to do for an idiot import. And this is the very first one. So I got my copy from them, and there will be a link in the description that is an affiliate link that will lead to let you buy uppers, if you feel like it. It's also clearly marked down there. Okay, that shouldn't get me in, the tru in trouble with anybody. So, uppers is another beat-em-up, just like Senran Kagura was. Let's load into my game here. I've just passed the two-hour mark. I've beaten two of the game's seven chapters, according to the trophy list. So, while I'm not exactly very far into the game, I have a rough idea of what I'm doing. So this is the hub. There's actually not that much here. If we go out the sides of the street, we go to the mission select screen. These are our two current support queens, and I'm willing to bet there's going to be a third one in the, one of the first missions of this next chapter. And the support queens are where the leveling up comes, in, comes up in this game, because you can't actually level up your main character, which is... Very unusual, I found. But, yeah. So, we talk to them. Reward cutscene. Yeah, this happens a bit. Actually, a little bit surprised, but then again, it is a Kenshiro game. Why am I surprised? I don't know. The game calls these reward cutscenes, I think? Very odd, but oh well, I'll take it. And now I've got a new outfit available at the shop, which is great. But anyway... Yeah, if we talk to the support queens, we can see what their stats are. There's not much, it's just when that heart fills up, you'll get more abilities listed on the side there. I, this girl is aerial attacks powered up, I think. I think I remember that correctly. And this girl over here is... Actually, if I... Can't I hit, like, a menu button to see what she... Didn't, didn't mean to go there. Can't I hit a menu button to see what she does? Not here, apparently. But she has, like, powered up on base attack abilities and faster, um, voltage growth, I think. So I'm sticking with her just because she's more leveled up at the moment. If we come here to the house, we can select our player characters. We'll stick with the main two for the moment, but once you beat bosses in the story, you'll unlock them as playable characters, and you can also play as them in specific missions in the story. But we'll stick with the main two for now, we might swap characters later. We can come to the status screen to see more about the characters we've unlocked. Not particularly interesting. We can come here to... <laughs> we can come here to the... I don't know what these are called in-game, but basically they're girls that stand around and cheer you on in the middle of fights. And if you do their goals, you learn more about them and they'll give you their letters, which is basically you hooking up with them, more or less. Very odd. You can also change their panty colour. Why you would do this, I don't know. I think it has something to do with the panty slot mechanic, but... I don't really think it matters. Oh, well, then again, it might have something to do with the panty slot mechanic. What does the message just say? Oh. Oh, yeah, I, I also forgot you can do this. It's a Kenshiro Takai game. What do you want? Like, you can literally make a skirt fly up. You can touch her. You know, it's about all the usual stuff you expect from a Kenshiro game. And you can do this with pretty much every every girl you come across in the storyline. It's pretty silly, you know. Nothing too bad. You can also come here to check out the panties by themselves. They may also have extra powers. They might have extra powers. And we all, we do also have the peony slot combination. So this, this is what this screen is. And we'll get onto what the peony slot mechanic is later. We can come to my database to see voice lines, different event cutscenes. And we'll be seeing one as we go into the next level. So we won't worry about that. More voice lines. We can listen to some of the music. And some of the music in this game is actually pretty good. Like, listen to this. The game's got a bit of style to it, and I like that. It's quite nice. And your record, which is all your stats and trophies. 
and you can save manually and come here to configure options, but honestly, I haven't really felt the need to do this to the point where I literally, where I literally haven't even been in the screen yet, but yeah, you've got a bunch of options here if you want them, I don't even know what they are, so... Most of the time, I translate this stuff using the Google Translate app on my Android phone or my Android tablet. And in this game, I really haven't needed to. Hey, there's a poster back here. In this game, I really haven't needed to. It's very clear for the most part. There is one part that I need to translate and we'll get onto that as we get into the missions. If we go to one point, basically you can come here to buy clothes. That's basically it. You can just, you can just buy clothes for any of the car. Well, not any of the cars, but you can buy clothes for the ladies, you can buy clothes for some of the men. Um, unfortunately, you can't use as many clothes for the men as you can for the ladies, and you can come here to change their clothes, right? So yeah, see, so I've only got two t-shirts for him, I've only got two outfits for her, you know. Wish there was a little bit more customization, but, you know, not that big a deal. And that's basically it for this entire street. Like, I haven't seen anything else go on here. Story doesn't happen here, it just feels like a hub world. Not that big of a deal, just... You know, it's a hub world. What do you expect? So, huh, apparently I get a special sub-chapter here. But the game is spread across chapters. And you can unlock missions by doing previous missions, obviously. And you can also do... You can also unlock special missions by finishing a chapter. I have one over here, number seven. And there is also special missions. So that's pretty neat. We'll go and play... Chapter 1 here, so the more missions you do, the more you get on that heart meter, and when you get that heart meter completely filled up, it'll unlock the boss fight. So, and you can also just press square to go straight to the mission you want, which is quite nice, as you can see, but we won't do that. We'll be going to the start of Chapter 3, because that'll be relatively challenging. You can change your, your support queen here. That's an awesome name, support queen. And you can change the difficulty. There are two difficulty levels, easy and hard, but this game isn't very difficult even on hard mode. I mean, hard, you do have to pay attention in order to not die, but in easy mode, I could probably look away from the screen and still survive. They attack so infrequently on the normal modes. I put it up to hard mode basically as soon as I was done. There's no reason to not go to hard mode because you're, you're as effective as in normal mode, unlike, say, a Dynasty Warriors game where you just outright do less damage unless you get a really powerful weapon, but this game doesn't have any experience systems. So that was a quick example of a story cutscene, not much to it. I honestly have no idea what's going on because I haven't tried to translate it, but frankly, when, when you see the actual game, you'll understand why. So, this is uppers. We have enemies. What do we do with the enemies? We beat the shit out of them. We have two buns to do so. We have the square button, which is a regular weak attack, and the triangle button, which is a strong attack. Now, you can combine these into combos, but there's not really that much to it, honestly. You also have a grab button with the circle button. Boom! And yes, I did just throw that guy down a manhole, which is quite a funny thing to say. Down this one goes too, because that's my goal for that. And that's quite awesome. You do also have the X button, which is a... Well, it, not only is it a dodge button, it's not a run button, it's a dodge button. You can also use it to run up walls and do specific things. Your circle button also helps you interact with the world, right? So, if there's a pole, for example, or if there's a flaming barrel like this, I can kick it and cause some damage that way. Environmental moves are actually a big thing in this game. Like, for example, if I kick this guy against the car... Oh, I guess this car isn't... Oh yeah, there it goes. That is one of the cars that moves. Yeah, environmental interactions are one of the big things that this game does a lot. I'm gonna guess that's well, not so much a replacement for mechanical depth with lots of different combos that do different things or stuff like that, but at the same time, it's, it's not exactly the most interesting system in the world. So, we'll talk about these girls like now. These are the bystanders. And they want you to do specific things. So as you can see, I've got a clock that's infinite right now. 
and a counter up in the top left there. And if I hit select, I can actually see what that mission objective is. This is the only time I've really had to use translation because I honestly don't know what these are off the top of my head. And I mean, some of them are really easy. Some of them are literally just like along the lines of get brain work with me here. I need to turn down my brightness. I'm going to translate this while I'm talking about it. Some of these are really simple along the lines of things like um, just go into the voltage mode at least once, right? And then there are some that are actually really difficult, like get three environmental interactions, throw every enemy you see off the off the um, into a environmental hazard, you know, stuff like that. And for some reason, my camera refuses to focus on my Vita screen, and it won't focus on my big screen. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to translate that. I won't waste your time any longer. Let's go back into the fight. Thankfully, you can skip these. They're not mandatory. But they do actually give you bonuses for the fights. So, for example, if you impress them, you might have seen earlier on that a bunch of cards appeared up in the top left. Boing, boing. You might have seen earlier that a bunch of cards appeared in the top left, and that's the peony slot. And if you get three in a row, it gives you a bonus, depending on how you decide to do things. Let's see what happens if I hit... Now, if I hit down here, hopefully that's the goal for this. It's not, unfortunately, but... Oh, well. So, if I hit down, I go into voltage mode, and that's if I've got one token on the voltage meter on the left there, right? So, bang. That was the goal. Alright, but I just killed like four guys at once. I was hoping that was not the end of the level there, but um... Yeah, so you can see on the left that I've got the voltage meter there, and the voltage meter will fill up as you defeat enemies and do goals for the ladies. And the idea is that if you press down, you'll go into your voltage mode. And when you go into your voltage mode, you'll... You get faster, you get stronger, and you also get the ability to do this. If you hit a guy so hard... If you hit, if you hit a guy so hard, he goes flying, everything goes slow motion. And if you hit the right button, you can do a massive chain that'll do a ton of damage. However... There, are, there is also another thing you can do with this. If you hit the D-pad to the left or right, like I tried to do earlier, but couldn't pull off. There we go. Push the D-pad to the left or right, you can do a tag team attack. And it does an absolute ton of damage, and it can swap you out to the other character, because you're piloting two characters at once. And they do have separate health bars. They don't regenerate by themselves, but that's all right. One annoying thing about the girl goals that you can see there is that you have to stay within range of the girls in order for the goals to count, which is honestly kind of annoying when you're trying to deal with them and they're flying all over the place like that. Because if they get knocked out of range and you go and defeat them out of range, it won't count at the goal. It's not that big of a deal though, honestly. The brawling itself, while simplistic, because other than the fact that there are different characters that have different movesets from time to time, they don't really get any new moves, they don't power up, they don't do anything like that, so you've basically just got your simple move set. Despite that though, the game's brawling is pretty fun. Every hit feels like it lands pretty damn well, and getting enemies into long combos is pretty damn satisfying and being able to dodge around and all that. I swear that guy on the right is the horniest bastard I've ever seen in my life, judging purely by the fact that this background has come up several times. But yeah, anyway, as I was saying before, the brawling, while simplistic, is pretty fun, and it's stylish, and it's quite enjoyable. Got a ton of points there, and some heart meter, some new panties, and a little bit up on the support queen realm. Realm? Meter. What the hell is a realm? Uh, we got a new mission. We don't have her as a support queen yet, but I imagine we'll have her shortly. 
Oh, I have to actually do something here. So maybe she's just down the other end of the... There she is. Reward cutscene. Yes, this does happen a lot, but we'll just skip it. Won't waste too much time here. And we'll head back out into the fight, because I don't think we've got anything new to buy or anything like that. So, this is basically uppers so far. It's a singular string of missions. There are some side missions that you can do. The missions never get any more complicated than defeat all the enemies or defeat the big boss guy. I'll just skip to the end of this. Defeat all the enemies or defeat the big boss guy. I mean, you can do all the girl goals if you want and get all the pairs of peonies and all that, but, you know, not exactly the most important thing in the world, right? Oop, no, no peony slot for me. But despite the fact that it's as simple as it is, I like the style of it. It's very... Come on, there we go. There we go. Alright. I do like the style of it, and I do like... You know, it's a Kenshiro game, so it's always going to have a fair bit of style to it. But it does look quite lovely. What the hell are these guys doing? It does look quite lovely. It moves pretty well. The fighting is smooth and quite enjoyable. Some of these enemies are ridiculous, because of course they are. I'm going to kick this. Everybody dies. Sounds pretty damn good too, as I explained earlier. Hey, Paul. Whee! This is actually useful in combat, but there's nobody here right now. It is a very simple game, and I can imagine this would also get quite repetitive as time goes on, but it's a brawler. What do you expect, right? So if I said that I wasn't, um, if I said that I'm not enjoying it almost immensely, I'd be calling myself a liar because it's also delightfully over the top. There are some levels. I'll go back and I'll play the first boss fight because the first boss fight is probably my one of my favourite examples of this game getting ridiculous. But there are some like special moves like that that get retardedly good. Like there's this one. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? There's this one special move that is ridiculous. There are some areas where there'll be a big marker on the floor, and if you hit it, it turns into a special move, right? And the special move for this particular thing that I was referring to was a uh, freaking... You punch the guy up in the air so hard he hit a helicopter, and the helicopter crashed into the ground and killed everyone in sight. I'm not even kidding. That was the whole point of the special move, and it was awesome. And I laughed out loud when I first saw it. And there's crazy crap like that all throughout. Like, there's school room, um, schools that have destructible floors that you can go right through. There's walls. There's um, human dunking, which I'll be more than happy to demonstrate when this level is done. It's delightfully over the top, as I already said. So, I enjoy it quite a lot, if you couldn't tell. Go to Voltage mode, because this will let me get all my hits in. But yeah, I'm enjoying uppers quite a lot, and it really is just... It is a great example of how even the most minimalist of brawlers can be a hell of a time. Just because of its overall simplicity, combined with the fact that it's just over the top, but ridiculous, and pretty fun in the process. That's probably the end of the stage. Stages are actually nice and short. Which is quite nice. Bit of weird an animation going on in the background there, but oh well. And these are obviously the bosses of this of this chapter. Gigantic Mexican wrestler dude that kind of looks like an orange Spider-Man. Um, at least the mask does. I can't really say anything about the chest. And Catwoman over there with pink hair. These guys have no luck with women, do they? They're just... 
They're just really incompetent around women. More points, more heart meter, more pantsu, more admirers. More heart meter. It's repetitive, sure, and it could get on some people's nerves, and it's not for everyone, but at the same time, it's a fun brawler. If you're a fan of Senran Kagura, it's Kagura, Kagura, take your pick. If you're a fan of any of those games, I'm just trying to... There we go. Um, actually, I'm not going to be able to tell which one's which. Let's just hit... Let's just hit the square button and go straight to mission six. And let's go. I probably should have swapped characters, actually. That's something I should have done. I probably should have demonstrated what the other characters are like. But... Yeah, let's do that. I'll go back and I'll swap characters. Wrong menu option. Wrong menu option again. Man, the Japanese are weird. Why is resume first and then exit mission second? I never got why they did that. Hang on. I will go back to... Yeah, I'll just go back to the mission menu here. Uh, squared, mission six. Sorry for the plane that's going over. There's been planes going over here constantly for a while now. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, we'll pick the biker do, and we'll pick one of the guys we're about to fight, because why not? Yeah, we'll pick the black dude. <laughs> the black dude is awesome. Oh. Uh, I guess we'll lock to these guys with this mission, huh? Oh well. Maybe I made a mistake, maybe I didn't. Alright, here we go. So this is a boss fight. About the same as previously, but you can do crazy shit. Oh, hey girls. You can do crazy shit like the following. If I stand in the middle of this, ow, and do this, Hey, That's awesome. Just stomp that guy a bit. Yeah, that's, this is basically how this game works. It's just a bunch of silly brawling, over the top, relatively simplistic, but still pretty damn fun nonetheless. And while I do hope it comes over here so I can understand this ridiculous story, at the same time, if you do end up having to import it, right, it's a pretty good deal, all things considered. Like. You don't have to know much Japanese to get along in this game. I mean, sure, these goals might be a little bit... What's the word I'm looking for? These goals might be a little bit hard to decipher, especially if they're one of the harder ones in the native language, but I don't really see... Bam. I don't really see, like, anything against importing this if you're not very skilled in Japanese, because it's... It's pretty easy to play. Doesn't require that much Japanese knowledge, and hey, I mean, I got through it without even relying on a guide in the tutorial, so that was quite nice. But anyway, let's go fight the bosses. Hello. Going into your voltage mode does does set off the penis slot, which is quite nice. I just love the idea, like, they scream so loud, the girl's skirts fly up. That's... that's silly. It's quite funny, but it's also quite silly. Game does have some performance problems from time to time, like, it will slow down when the things... when things get hectic. But to say I'm not having fun with it would be a lie, it's a... cool game. There's a lot of style, satisfying brawling, fair amount of stuff to do, fair amount of ogling you can do. It's over the top ridiculous and I like it. I like it a lot. Alright, come on big guy, get up and come over here so I can dunk you. Ow. I really should have seen that coming? Yep, you can chase after him too, it's quite neat. Kick him back up, this is just stuff in the shit out of him again, why not? 
Ha! <laughs> I didn't even see them there. I just threw them at him. Awesome. So yeah, uppers is pretty damn good. And while I might recommend waiting to see if it comes out in English, you know, give it a few months. It only just came out in Japan. At the same time, like, whether or not it does, I'd still fully recommend it. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I fully recommend playing uppers. There you go. Do you have a, where, where is he? Uh... Oh, there he is. Just give him a bit of a... Boot up the bum. And that's a finishing move, and that's the end of the boss fight. Sure, that was pretty easy, because I had the support buddy leveled up, so... Yeah, but... Still! Fun time! More cutscenes. Don't really need to watch them more than once. More points. More Pantsu. More support queen. I'm going to guess that means strong attack up, because it looks fairly similar to the weak attack up, but then again, I am a filthy gaijin, and what the hell do I know? So yeah, that was a look at uppers. Fun time, would fully recommend it. If you can't wait to play it in English, well, do me a favor and buy the Japanese version through the affiliate link uh, in the description. It's supplied by Play Asia. They supplied me this copy of the game, and thanks again to them for that. And thanks to their lovely amount of support. I didn't even know you could go up here, honestly. This is cool. Thanks to their fantastic amount of support that I'll hopefully be getting in the future. An idiot imports is going to be a lot more frequent. So, yeah, that'll be nice. I can even pick up some games that I never really got around to. But yeah, uh, expect more an idiot imports in the future. And this has been Blue Maxima. Once again, sponsored by PlayAsia. I'll see you all next time.